Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well, enjoying this beautiful stretch of weather that we have. Um, just so grateful for it. Um, certainly uh, un unexpected and um, very not typical of this time of year, but again, this time this this year, just about anything can go. So we'll take it, we'll celebrate it. Hope you're hope you're finding um, some time to get out there um, this weekend too, as it looks like it's going to be a great great weekend. I uh, want to provide a special update. We've made some decisions um, about some of our calendar and our scheduling um, around the Thanksgiving holiday. And so want to want to share a little bit more information uh, about that with you. Um, we've been monitoring uh, public health. We work, I work uh, um, with our local department of health, with county superintendents, uh, with our nurses. We're monitoring internally, we're monitoring nationally, we're monitoring regionally. Um, and certainly, unfortunately, uh, we continue to see rates go up. Yesterday, um, we saw nationally uh, the highest highest uh, rates um, for the entire pandemic. Um, so it's definitely um, definitely something we need to take a close look at. Um, regionally here, you can see that we have a 3.7% positive rate, so we're, we're seeing the trend lines go up, un unfortunately, uh, in the Finger Lakes region. You're likely to hear on today's news, if you haven't already, that uh, Governor Cuomo in his Friday address um, uh, specifically mentioned Monroe County as having some problem areas that they're going to need to address. Um, and so um, please know we, we continue to monitor this. From our county, we're a little bit lower. Um, however, we have had some high points. Um, this past Sunday was the highest uh, day of positive rates um, um, for the whole pandemic. And so, um, although things are going well, um, that's through our efforts, yours efforts um, of wearing masks, physically distancing, following the public health guidelines about gathering, um, taking care of yourself, taking care of um, your loved ones around you. All those things, you know, continue to um, help us um, have a little bit of a better uh, public health situation than areas around us in the Finger Lakes um, and certainly nationally. And so thank you for that. And please know that we've been talking and thinking a lot about that. We do have some active cases here in the county. Um, the county has been celebrated for this metrics board here that they have. Um, they've been great partners throughout this. Um, um, Got to thank uh, Jennifer Rodriguez, our director of uh, public health here in Livingston County. Um, and all of her staff, they've just been great collabor collaborators. They've been working with us, um, helping us through this um, and just doing a great job. Internally, um, some of the data that I've, I've shown, um, shown you before, right? We, we have um, uh, the, the protocol from New York State Department of Health. We've had two, uh, this is for the elementary school. We've had 207 students enter into that since we came back to in-person instruction. Um, there's been 154 tests and all of those tests have come back negative among students. Um, so thank you to families for being patient with us to be in the protocol um, and to test out of it. Um, but as you can see, we are taking this seriously. Um, we are making sure we're partnering with families, um, but we're monitoring student health to ensure that all everyone can be here safely as we keep moving forward. Middle high school, same, same data set. Um, 159 students have been in this protocol since we started on September 14th. Um, 123 tests have been um, given um, and uh, they've all come back negative. So again, really happy, really proud, um, something to celebrate um, that uh, we've had no student, knock on wood, we've had no student um, cases to this point. We have had, as we've communicated, uh, three different positive cases among staff. Um, staff, we've had 49 staff members enter into a COVID protocol um, since coming back at the beginning of the year. Um, 31 negative test results with three positive cases. And so some of the numbers uh, don't add up um, only because um, they're still in process um, as far as testing. Some of them were um, proximate contacts. Um, and so um, they quarantine as part of being in the protocol, but uh, did not have the test. Um, administered. One of the things that I shared last week is the governor's new approach into the zones, the red, the orange, and the yellow zone. And undoubtedly, we'll hear a little bit more about that, um, I would think, coming into next week with Monroe County based on what the governor signaled uh, today. Um, if we find ourselves in a yellow um, zone, it's requiring us to have 20% 
testing students and staff um, to continue in-person learning. And as I mentioned last week, um, that's, that's a real issue when I look in the logistics and the nuts and bolts of getting that done. It'd be approximately 360 tests each week. Right now in working with Livingston County Department of Health, we're, we really don't think we're gonna be able to secure those um, or administer those. I was on a conference called, uh, I guess a couple days ago uh, with New York State Department of Health where they are trying to put in place um, a process where, where schools could um, administer tests. Um, right now that, that's pretty cumbersome. Um, there's a lot of issues we're looking into it, but there's a lot of issues with that. Um, and um, it's pretty expensive. Um, so right now, some of some of just the ballpark um, things would each test be twenty five twenty five dollars. So um, you know that that would that would be a pretty expensive um, endeavor. Uh, budgets are tight, and you know we have to take a look at that. So in addition, just in general, um, also you know we're an educational institution. We're not a medical testing institution. Um, I have some some issues with our staff, um, even our medically trained staff um, administering. Uh, tests. Um, perhaps when the tests become a little bit less intrusive, um, that would be, you know, something we take a look at. But um, right now, um, m many of the tests, right, um, require some, um, some swabbing that um, is at least uncomfortable, shall we say. So I think better done with other medical professionals and other venues. Uh, but we have partnered with Livingston County Department of Health um, to have some access to some rapid testing um, but just not at this amount of 360 tests. So we want to avoid this yellow situation. That's, you know, that means everybody's healthy too. So that's a reason why. And so in order to do that, we are, we've made a decision to move to uh, a preventative uh, periodic closure. In talking with Livingston County Department of Health, um, we assessed that uh, if we moved all of our pre-K-12 in-person learning to digital days, on the Monday and Tuesday before Thanksgiving and the Monday and Tuesday after Thanksgiving, that that would give us the best chance um, to limit um, some public health concerns that I'm gonna share in just a minute. So again, the big announcement that we need to share today for your planning purposes is that we'll be having all PK-12 in-person learning uh, move to digital days on Monday, uh, November 23rd and Tuesday, November 24th. Those were originally half days for us. So there was already a modified schedule. Uh, we're going to go to digital days. So if you're a digital student right now, you don't need to worry about any of this. But if you're an in-person student, then on Monday, November 23rd, and Tuesday, November 24th, you're going to stay home and you're going to access learning through a digital um, platform. Same thing for Monday, November 30th, and Tuesday, December 1st. Those are the Monday and Tuesday after the Thanksgiving break. Fair question of why. Well, why, why are we doing that? What are some of the consideration points that we, that we put into this? Well, we've been looking at this for the past couple of weeks, monitoring those rates that I laid out before, um, thinking about um, what's our best um, investment um, to stay in person and maintain this in-person setting that we're in. And so uh, what it will do is limit the potential for school-based community spread um, in, three, in three real kind of areas. Um, we're going to have a number of college students coming back to our community, um, some from Monroe County, some from Erie County, both where local stats are not doing so well, and some from across the nation. We do have, um, you know, a number of students that go to different colleges, and so whether it be throughout the state or beyond the state, they're going to be returning. Not having in-person, um, in-school interactions on the Monday and Tuesday before Thanksgiving will help. Um, families monitor if symptoms are to emerge um, and limit, again, the spread within the school um, setting. Thanksgiving Day, it will also limit any of those exposures that could happen on, on Thanksgiving Day in the gatherings. Now, um, I'm not here to send any signals or in any way um, what, you, what families do on Thanksgiving Day is, is completely and utterly up to, up to you. What the public health uh, recommendations are, are that if you have gatherings of multiple families, um, that you should still abide by social distancing, mask wearing, all those things are still in play. Um, not being in large gatherings are still a recommendation there. But again, that's up to you. You're gonna make those decisions. What I know is we have 1500, roughly 1500 students, um, you know, about 
you know, about a thousand families of that, of those 1500, um, including staff and stuff. And they're all going to make different decisions and that's completely okay. It's a, I mean, one of the things I hold true about this wonderful country is that it's a free country and you're going to make those decisions for you and your family. My responsibility in, in ensuring public health and safety for our students and our staff um, led me to get to the spot where that if um, with the knowledge that many, not always, but most of the time symptoms are starting to develop three to five days out of exposure. So if we've got Thanksgiving on Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, that gives us five days um, to allow symptoms to emerge from Thanksgiving gatherings. And so through our pre-screening that we ask families to do at home, through our screenings at school, um, it gives us a, a, a pretty good chance to let Thanksgiving Day gatherings um, be whatever they are and make sure that it doesn't negatively impact our position of maintaining in-person uh, learning beyond that. The last one is there's been some changing to the travel um, advisories and travel bans that the governor has put in place. Um, there's a way to test out of that. It includes being tested before you were leaving a state and then quarantining um, for a small number of days uh, before, once you get back and then be able to test out of that. So having Monday and Tuesday after Thanksgiving also gives us a little bit of time to reduce the impact for that and then make sure that we have the staffing as well as the classrooms ready um, for people to return on Wednesday. So I really look at this as an investment, an investment of two days, the Monday and Tuesday after Thanksgiving, and then two half days, so really three instructional days, um, investing in that to give us the best chance to stay in person um, for those families that are with us in person uh, moving through the month of December. Periodic closure schedule. This is what we'll be using for those four days at the elementary school. We've also um, standardized this so that if there were other periodic closures, you have the schedule. We'll communicate this in multiple formats. You'll see a bigger uh, one in the letter that we send as well as other information that will come up in the elementary. But you can see we're gonna have an abbreviated day that takes the feedback we've received from different thought exchanges about uh, limiting screen time for our youngest learners in particular. Um, and so you can see where it balances screen time with different non-screen activities um, and runs, a, runs an abbreviated day from 9 a.m. To, um, to 12 noon and then has lunch and recess that you have at home um, and then um, have some family choice activities in the afternoon that are asynchronous, so things that you can do. As always, we need to, we need to work with each other. And so there may be times where you don't have access, where internet's not working, where maybe you did travel somewhere and you weren't able to connect. Um, and so don't worry about it. Just, just stay in contact with your teachers. And if you stay in contact with your teachers, that will totally take it and we'll figure it out and we'll work the problem from there. So we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna do our best and we're gonna support each other as we go through it. Middle high school schedule, again, another abbreviated schedule. Um, what you'll see here is that we start a little later at 9.30, um, 9.35 a.m., and we run the five period day through 1.15. Again, there'll be asynchronous opportunities will be provided if you can't connect, those type of things. Um, and so we'll just keep working with each other. If you have questions, you have concerns as we move through this, please reach out to your teachers. Your teachers are, are very interested in supporting you um, and working our way through this. Um, and um, if you can't get a hold of them, right, we've got counselors, we've got our principals, um, send an email to the, um, to the general COVID-19 email, um, just reach out. We'll work our way through this and we'll figure it out. Again, I'll have additional updates that will likely clarify some of this um, as needed um, next week, and I'll, get, I'll continue to do family updates every other week as we move through this. Please, please, please use this beautiful weather to give your family and you some self-care, some mental health um, uh, through the weekend. We need to make sure that we realize that as much as this is becoming normalized at some really weird level, there is so much going on in the world for you as, as families, for our students, for our teachers, um, not just with the public health of the global pandemic, but with politics. Certainly, there's a lot of stress out there. Um, the economy, um, unemployment is out there as well. Um, and so please, 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 let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of each other. Um, let's, let's not lose sight of 
all the investments we've had over this time of just putting people first. Um, the learning is going to come, and on these days, what will happen will happen, and we'll all do our best. Um, but we want to make sure that um, we stay connected um, and we stay supported and focused um, on the things that matter the most. We're all doing the very best we can, every single one of us. I know that this decision will um, make sense to some and not make sense to others. Um, and just know we're doing our best. I know you're doing your best with figuring it out and I know it'll cause some inconveniences with families and I appreciate you working through that. We're here to support you. We're gonna do whatever we can, um, but, but please know in all of this, I know that everybody's doing the best they can. There's a lot going on in the world and we're all figuring out the very best we can. We, we've found success thus far for the past few months. We know that there's better days in front of us. We will keep safely moving forward. We will keep persisting through this. Um, we appreciate um, your patience, your cooperation. We appreciate how, how much people are working together um, to keep things um, safely moving forward. We're gonna stay focused, we're gonna keep working the problem. Can't be more proud of um, our Bulldog community. We're one, I think it's about 20% of the entire state have figured out a way to be in person five days, um, five days a week. And we're in that small minority of the 20% that's done that. We've only been able to do that through um, people, um, people being creative and flexible, responsive, supportive, um, and working the problem together. So very bulldog proud um, um, of all that we've been able to accomplish and know that we're gonna continue to do so. Please stay healthy and be well um, and have a great weekend.